Hey everybody, this video brings us out to Fredericksburg, Virginia. Bear with me, my voice is still a little weird. I'm, I'm thinking it's the, the change in the weather for me. I'm not used to this blustery, low 70s, high 60s weather without the, without the humidity. And my voice is, um, is not, the, uh, not the better for, for it. I was already walking back in the woods a little bit, as you may be able to tell by the spider webs on my, my hat. Hopefully no spiders actually on me anywhere, but um, there is something there is something very interesting that sits back there in the woods that we are here to take a look at. So again, we are here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and the reason why we are here in Fredericksburg, Virginia is to take a look at something that sits right, right back there. We're actually at the end, the kind of like turnaround area that the, I don't want to say dead end, if you will, because this road goes this way, this road goes that way. It's the turnaround area. It's the end of Gordon W. Shelton Boulevard. So you drive all the way back down here, park at the turnaround area, right back here, right back there in the woods where there's clearly spiders. is something really interesting. I didn't look yet. Um, I just kind of walked up there, just kind of peered to make sure I could get to what it is I want to show you guys. It looks like we can. We're going to have to be walking through the woods. We're probably going to walk through a couple more spider webs, which I'm not thrilled about, but um, right back there is something pretty pretty interesting, something abandoned that I, I want to take a look at. I want to document, and I'm going to show you guys. So sitting back here, abandoned in the woods, is a museum, a museum that was never fully built. In 2001, former governor L. Douglas Wilder, he proposed the idea to build the United States National Slavery Museum, a museum dedicated to the horrors, the tragedy of slavery here in the United States. And it was, it was, it was looking good. Things were, were, were off the ground. Donations were made. Celebrities made donations. Locals made donations. Money was, was being raised. And by 2007, a little bit of it was, was built. A garden was built. Some of it was starting to, to, uh, to, actually, to actually happen. The, the, the museum was, was off the grounds. However, by 2008, plans were abandoned. The museum was abandoned and things were just, were not happening. The reason why he says that the museum actually never got built is because of the 2008 recession. Money was tight. Things were not going well. People were not really traveling. Money was not really coming in. And the plans had to be put on the back burner. Things had to be abandoned, scrapped. And after that, it just fell to the wayside. The, the museum was never actually built. A little bit of it was put together, but for the most part, none of it was actually ever built. You can see there is a bit of a fence back here behind the foliage. That is part of the original museum. There's a bit of a fence back here as well. But we have to walk through the woods to actually see some of the other remains. So you can see there's a fence here. This is from the original museum that was supposed to sit back here. But like I said, it was never actually built. By 2008, plans were just scrapped. Nothing was actually ever done. And what was built, the little bit, the garden, and a little bit that was actually built back here just has sat abandoned, rotting away in the woods since then. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is kind of amazing. Look, look at this. You can see there's, there's signs up here. There's a wooden walkway. Over here, there's some other signs back there. I'm walking through some more spider webs. <laughs> Look at this. You can see the, the wooden walkway here. That is cool. This bush does not look natural. This one stands out. This was probably planted here. Oh, all these bushes. You can see there's, there's a whole row of hedges here. These were definitely planted for the the museum. That's why these are here. They're of course overgrown and and growing over top of the uh, the wooden walkway. We'll go back that way in a minute. You can see there's lots of 
different signs and stuff, but I want to see what's uh, what's this way first. We'll walk down the plank more kind of towards the um, the road where we be parked. I'm walking through so many little spider webs, <laughs> so many spider webs. Oh my gosh, look at this! Very difficult to read. They're very weathered. They're all they're all cracked and kind of falling apart. This says runaways, I believe that says. Although, I'm gonna try to read this. Although most runaway slaves sought freedom individually, often resulting in them leaving behind family members who may never be seen again, there are instances of bold and courageous efforts at emancipation that should be, be told, I think. Clearly there was very little, that is really hard to read, recorded for slave families on the part of the slave owners and settlers, yet family ties often, I think it says influence decisions, whether or not to flee. So it's very difficult to read. There's a, I believe a slave there on a, on a horse. This is interesting. All this stuff just left back here to rot away, to be weathered away. Pretty crazy. The plaque when you first walk in or what would be when you first walked in, I'm parked right, right over there on the other side of the gate says auction block. One of the most common symbols of American slavery was the auction block. The auction block was the ultimate manifestation of the capitalistic and inhuman nature of American slavery. And again, then after that, it gets kind of really difficult to read because it's all, it's all worn away there. But I believe back here behind this sign, this is an auction block. Look at that. So you could, I don't know if I want to step on this. Eh, it seems a little sketch. So you could walk up on top of this. Yeah, I'm not going to stand on that. That's, 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 that's very weathered. But you could stand on this and stand on the auction block. That is interesting. Look at that. I mean, terrible, obviously. Terrible symbol, but that's what that is right there. An auction block. That is crazy. That, that's back here still. Built around 2007. It's been sitting here just rotting away ever since. So a little interactive sort of areas here you could, you could explore. Pretty crazy. And kind of a terrible thing, but I guess it would kind of put you in the place of a slave you get up on here and sort of look around and feel stared at and just think about how awful it was to to be up on top of this just essentially being sold okay so that was kind of the end of the the boardwalk but we do have this sign here as well um spirits of freedom this one wow this one i really can't read i think it says history is a I, yeah, that is, that, that, this one is very worn. I have no idea what I'm reading here. I see some, looks like horses, some people being, I guess, carried in a, in a cart, some slaves, unfortunately, probably being taken somewhere. This one I can't really read, unfortunately. That is very, very weathered. But multiple signs right here when you first walk in, in the, the auction block right there. There's also some, like a wooden wall here and there. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with um, with this plaque here or not, but there is definitely a wall there and there's a wooden wall there. But again, I don't know what those are for, why those are here. Maybe something was, was meant to be there or hung from there or strung across there. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. There are some again, little wooden walls back there. All right. Continuing on down the boardwalk. We're gonna go see what's up here. There's more plaques, more signs up here. Look at this. There's a ton of signage up here. This whole area, it's a big, big circle. I'm not sure how far back this goes. I think this might kind of be it. I can see more, something, something more back there. So there's a, yeah, there's a lot of signage right here. I think the, um, the more I'm looking at this, the, the wooden um, walls here, I think these just were put in between each of the the signs. That one you can see there's a, oh, looks like there's a, like a plantation owner 
whipping a slave right there. So there were kind of like silhouettes of maybe not so nice things on the, uh, on the walls. So this museum was gonna be kind of a big deal, a big ambitious project. There was supposed to be a full scale replica slavery ship built. They were going to have a theater. There was going to be a library here. It was a big thing that was going to be built back here. Millions of people were expected to visit every single year. But again, the, uh, the recession hit and it just didn't happen, unfortunately. I think there's another auction block maybe back here. I heard there was one with footprints. Maybe not. I don't know what this is here. Maybe there was supposed to be a, um, a statue on the pedestal here. I'm not sure. I think the auction block might have been... The auction block might... It always scares me when I hear people drive down the road because it's a dead end. There's nothing down here but, <laughs> but me. <laughs> this is the only thing back here. So I'm like, why are people driving down the road? I don't know. It is a turnaround, but still kind of scary. I did see online that there was um, like a a concrete area where there was like footprints. I think it was actually supposed to be back on the uh, the auction block, but I didn't see any footprints back there. So maybe somebody took the um, took the, the footprints. I don't know. So I'm not sure. Maybe again, it's, it's pretty flat. I'm thinking maybe a statue was supposed to be right here or something. We are kind of in the, the center of this garden area. The only really thing built before the plans were, were scrapped. Again, I can't really read these. They're just so weathered. I have no idea what that says. But there are just a ton of plaques back here. There's a lot to read. If we could read these, there would be a lot to read. This one says, I think, acts of bravery. But again, it's just, it's so difficult. Every day that a human being had to endure the terrors of slavery we required um, extreme bravery. There we go. Again, very difficult to read. So there's a I guess a former slave right there. This one over here says hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, here we go. Ken Smith sculptor. Yeah, so there we go. There was supposed to be a statue right here. I'm guessing a, sculp a sculpture made by Ken Smith. So right here at one point, there either was or there was supposed to be a statue. My guess is it probably never actually was put here, or maybe it was, and they took it away. I have no idea, but yeah, there you go. Right there at one point was supposed to be, or was, a statue. The root meaning of the word hallelujah is an expression of joy, praise, and gratitude. Certainly slaves in America upon securing their freedom were overcome with joy, praise, and gratitude as such freedom became a celebration of perseverance courage and faith so it says ken smith artist 1942 and then yeah i really can't read what all that says so all right i believe right there was supposed to at one point been a statue right here in the middle of the the, the only thing built the little garden built you can see the boardwalk goes all the way around so this was supposed to be set here in the woods and they put the boards down to keep the mud off you and and whatnot i'm trying to figure out what that says middle middle passage i think is what that says and then this one i really can't read either it's very worn down and the um the vegetation has has put some moss and whatnot on top of this i i, yeah, I cannot read that one unfortunately there's another wooden wall back here. I don't know what was supposed to be on that one. There's this one back here. Very difficult to make out what was supposed to be on any of this stuff. Voices of the past. Letter to Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of the State, August 19th, 1791 from B. Becker. And then again, very difficult to read. Sir, I am fully sensible of the greatness of that freedom which I take with you on the present okay, occasion. I, yeah, again, it's, it's too difficult to read. So this was a, um, a letter written to Thomas Jefferson, who at the time was the Secretary of the State. And you see there's another wall back there with another silhouette on it. 
this one, oh, this one here is obviously very non-readable. That one's completely worn away. Another silhouette there. It's very difficult to make out what these are. This one here has writing on it. This one here says, wow. Um, I have no idea what that says. So after looking at this a little bit more, I believe it says commemorating, understanding, overcoming. That's what this, that's what this wall here says. And then there's all kinds of stuff back here. Is that a, what is that? A camera or something back? I don't know what that is. What do you think? I don't think I should go anywhere near whatever that is. Maybe that was a, um, a camera. Maybe that was a camera. Actually, you can see there's something there on that pole. So maybe they had cameras back here. You can see there's a, there's a walkway that kind of goes up there. I wonder if there's anything back this way. I don't really see anything up there, but you can see there's definitely like some stepping stones right there. And then there's the pieces of wood right there. I don't even know what this is. What do you think this thing was? Look at that. It's like a roof of something. That's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this was. I'm guessing some kind of roof. That's definitely roofing right there. Roofing material, shingles, but who knows what that was for? No idea. Oh, wow. Look at this. This right here, Exhibition Designs for the United States National Slavery Museum. Look at that. That is interesting. So interesting that this stuff just sits back here. It's sad it was never actually built. I mean, other than the little bit we, we had built, but it's a shame the whole thing was never actually built. But you can see they definitely had plans. That is really, really interesting. You can kind of make out what I think is supposed to have been the museum. Maybe there's some like, looks like some walls right there. A bunch of people walking around, maybe some statues all throughout here that looks like there's some like little circles. Maybe there's a bunch of statues that were supposed to be here. I can't really make out anything else. Looks like I'm seeing like an indoor area here with like a, a ship in a, um, a glass display case, people walking around. So it looks like at one point that was a um, an image of what the maybe the museum was supposed to look like. This might be the oh, I think that maybe that's the the full the full scale slavery ship that was going to be built. I can see like a mast right here. Looks like the like the front of the boat right there. I think that's what that is. Some books written by slaves. So there's a whole list of books written by slaves. Okay, continuing our trek through the, the woods here. There's some more stuff down here, but again, it's very difficult to read any of this. Like this one here, I, I have no idea what this says. I, I, ow, 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 I don't know. But what I can tell you is there's definitely some, some thorns. <laughs> I, I was warned. I did read, if you come out here, watch out for the thorns. So far, so good. Up until... That moment right there. That one, that one hurt a little bit. This plaque here says Henry Box Brown. Let's see if I can read this one. Henry Brown was born and raised a slave in Louisa, I think it says, County, Virginia. He was hired out to work in the tobacco factories in Richmond, Virginia, where he met a Northern sympathizer, um, Samuel Smith. Again, it's very hard to read who owned a shoemaker shop through a small portion, uh, or sorry, through a small portion of his pay that he was allowed to keep. He managed to hire his wife, also a slave, and they set up a house with their children. I have no idea what this box back here is about. Again, it's, it's just, it's so difficult to read any of this, um, this stuff, but I wonder what this is about. Wait, try sitting in the replica box. Details of Brown's escape, where he had himself shipped. Oh, okay, so he had himself shipped via Adams Express from Richmond to Philadelphia. I'll have to look into that. Um, so I guess he, he shipped himself in a box. The box itself became an 
abolitionists up the, uh, yeah again it's very hard to read this but okay so he shipped himself in this box back here so this box i guess henry brown henry box brown shipped himself from richmond virginia to philadelphia pennsylvania in this box right here so we can open this box up i'm gonna be honest i'm back here alone in the kind of the middle of nowhere sort of scared to open this box up but but we have to right we're gonna open the box up. If I find a dead body in here, I'm not gonna be happy. <laughs> or any anything creepy in here, I'm not gonna be happy. I can tell you one thing, I'm not gonna get in the box. I'm not gonna try sitting in the box that um, that Mr. Brown shipped himself in, but you know, I've seen way too many scary movies and know this is just, just a bad idea, but all right. Something, gosh, is something gonna jump out at me? Ooh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, thank... Whoa, oh, okay. There's there's nothing in here. We're we're good. Okay. Whew. Uh, I gotta be honest, that was terrifying me. I, again, I've seen a lot of scary movies. <laughs> I was waiting to find something not so nice in here, but there you go. You could get inside there. So again, like interactive elements out here. The 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 slave block that you could stand on, the box, you could get inside to see what it would have been like to to have shipped yourself from Richmond, Virginia to to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and a big wooden box. Pretty crazy. And the fence continues around, around the property as well. Like I said, this was the only thing ever built. This was the only thing that ever actually got done. This kind of a garden area here. And the whole museum with the ship and all the, all the things that were going to be on display just never happened. I believe this plaque here says quest for knowledge. But then again, it's so hard to read. For over 23 years... Why am I trying this? For over 23 years, the, the most revered slaves in America were those who were educated. All right, so yeah, yeah, again, that's that's very difficult. Something about laws being passed to forbid slaves from uh, literacy. Anyway, so basically it's telling you that, um, that uh, they did not want slaves to be educated. So pretty crazy. It's been so crazy all this stuff sits back here, back in the woods rotting away for the United States National Slavery Museum that was just never built. Other than this, never built. And it's really sad to think that just this sits back here. Even had they just preserved, preserved this, they just said, okay, well, we've already built this. This is already done. The museum is not actually going to happen. It would have been nice had they at least kept this up. All right, we, we built a garden. It's something. It's not much. It's not what we had planned. But why not keep this, keep this going, keep this upkept so people could, could come back here, could read the, um, the plaques, see the statue that would have been here. But now the whole project was just completely abandoned. Once they realized they didn't have the money, they didn't have the funds anymore, things were not going to happen. The, the actual building, the actual museum itself was not going to get built. They just... They just abandoned the whole thing and just left all this back here to rot away. So just out of curiosity, I had to walk up this little path here, which is very, very overgrown where the um, stepping stones were, because I wanted to see if there's anything up here. Looks like there were supposed to be. There's these wooden kind of, um, I don't know, these wooden boxes on the ground that I'm assuming at one point were supposed to have housed, ah, were supposed to have housed something. There's um, what looks to be like a fence back here, a wooden fence, more of these wooden boxes on the ground. I don't know what was supposed to have been back here. I have no idea, but I wanted to walk back here just to, see if anything was back here. I don't, I don't see anything, but something was supposed to be up here. Maybe, ow, gosh darn it, more pickers. Maybe more um, statues. We are kind of up here on like a hill area. Down there was where the, um, the plaques I was reading were. So we are kind of like elevated and you can see they're kind of sort of equally spread out. So I'm guessing maybe other statues or something were supposed to be back here and you could see them from down there. And then if you wanted maybe you could walk up the, uh, the stone walkway 
and get a better look at these or maybe that was um, an access route for people working here i don't know looks like another another wooden box is back there as well so at one point obviously something was supposed to have gone here i'm thinking some kind of statue or or something that overlooked the um the gardens but now just random wooden boxes wooden platforms all right so i'm thinking that's going to do it from the abandoned what it was supposed to have once been the united states national slavery museum now this little garden sitting back here abandoned rotting away in the woods here in fredericksburg virginia and from what i saw online there were at one point footprints in concrete right here on top of the auction block but now they've been taken away so somebody probably came out here maybe did some some treasure hunting which uh i mean i don't know part of me is like well they, maybe they preserved it maybe that's maybe that's for the best but at the same time it would have been cool if they were still here for people to come out here and and see but all right i think that is gonna gonna do it pretty neat this still sits out here not so neat that it wasn't kept up like i said it would have been cool if they would have just um at the very least said well the whole idea isn't happening but at least we got this built let's let's preserve this let's keep this let's let people come out here and see this at least but they abandoned the whole project abandoned the garden abandoned the whole thing and just let it sit out here too to rot but pretty neat you can still come out here and check this out who knows how much longer this will be here this whole area someday could be developed i'm sure this is prime real estate we're right off the the highway i'm sure at some point this will be turned into to houses or something or who knows maybe maybe somebody will come along maybe a new governor will come along and say you know what let's get that museum built at this point, not looking good, but who knows? We can keep hope alive. Maybe someday it'll get built and we can look back on this video and say, remember when it was just in a, an abandoned garden in the middle of the woods? Maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed. I would love to see the uh, museum actually get built. We need something like that, a museum here dedicated to the, the awfulness of those who had to endure the, the tragedy of slavery here in the United States, but all right, that's gonna do it. I'm sick of walking through spider webs and getting picked by thorns. So <laughs> pretty interesting. You can see that, oh, maybe it was lights. Maybe that's what was out here. There's a, another pole there with um, with something on it. I'm trying to see if there's more of those. Or it was a camera. Maybe they didn't want people out here. There were no signs that said no trespassing or anything. So I don't know, I'm thinking it was a light maybe at one point for when it got dusk and uh, you came out here. So. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the abandoned United States National Slavery Museum here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, sitting back here, rotting away in the woods. Pretty interesting. So if you guys have ever been out here to the uh, the remains of the, the museum, leave your comments down below. I want to hear from you guys. When you were out here, if you were out here, was it as overgrown? Were the signs as in that of condition as they are now. I've seen some photos online of this place and it seems that X amount of years ago, even though everything was still in decay, things were rotting away, signs not looking great. It seems like at one point the signs were at least slightly more legible and um, it wasn't as completely overgrown, but it definitely is now. Now it's very, very overgrown. The signs, you can kind of make them out some of the bigger words you can make out, but like, I can't read any of that. No idea what any of that stuff says. So if you guys have been out here, leave your comments down below. I wanna hear from, from you guys. Wanna know what your adventure out here was like. This is pretty neat though. Definitely happy I got to come out here and see this because again, who knows how much longer this will actually be here. This could be very well rotting away for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Who knows, but it could also be, the land could be developed in the next five or so years and all this stuff could be, could be gone. What once was supposed to be the United States National Slavery Museum. Never happened, just this little garden built and then abandoned. But all right, again, that's gonna do it. I'm gonna let you guys go. Think I can exit out this way, if I'm not mistaken. I can get through here past the 
the auction block right there. I don't really want to stand up here. I feel like I'm here. I should, right? I'm going to fall through this. Ooh. Maybe not the smartest thing I've ever, I've ever done, but I'm on the auction block. Now I'm getting off because that is really sketchy. That, <laughs> that, plank of, that piece of wood right there, it's definitely bowing. But all right, guys, that's going to do it. So as always, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the, hit the subscribe button. Check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Unfortunately, no postcards here at the, uh, the United States National Slavery Museum. Would have loved to have picked one up. Maybe a card, a sticker, a button, maybe stop to tie my shoe. Would have been nice, but unfortunately not possible. But anyway, guys, like I said, check down below for links to Patreon. Check down below for links to Spreadshirt, where you can grab yourself retro, rest up t-shirts and hoodies and hats and buttons and stickers and all kinds of cool stuff like that. And also hit that join button and become a member of this channel and gain early access to all of the videos. All that stuff helps support the show. It keeps the show going. It brings us out to interesting and awesome places like the abandoned United States National Slavery Museum. It actually sits right off of a, um, a quarry. Danger, no trespassing or swimming at Rock Quarry. All trespassers will be prosecuted. So if you come out here, check out the, check out the, uh, the abandoned museum, but don't go past the, uh, the gate here. There's a quarry back there and it's dangerous and it's, it's private property. So anyway, guys, that is, like I said, going to do it. So if you guys ever have been out here, like I said, leave a comment. Want to hear from you guys. But all right. If you guys watch this video all the way until the very end, hashtag, wow. What, what should today's hashtag be? I don't, I don't even know. Hashtag walking through spider webs. We'll go some, uh, <laughs> some no doubt Gwen Stefani there. Walking through spider webs if you guys watch this video all the way to the very end, because I just walked through a thousand of them. But all right, guys, again, that's going to do it. I've got to get back in the van, head back down south towards Florida. So for the next time I see you, I should be in Florida. So as always, guys, like I said, hit the like button and all that stuff. And if you guys, guys uh, subscribe, <laughs> if you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I will see you in tomorrow's video. One last look. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. I do have to say though, that the fact that this sits at the end of a road, a dead end, if you will, again, it kind of just turns around here. This part of the road goes that way. This part of the road goes that way. So if you do end up driving all the way down this road, you do have to, to turn around here. But what kind of adds to the, the creepiness of going back there in the woods is the fact that you're here all by yourself. I'm here alone. There's nobody out here. You can hear the, the highway off in the distance, but otherwise it's just crickets, chirping birds. It's just me and nature. That's it. But every now and then <laughs> when, you're, when you're back there, you hear a truck or a car or something pull up and it sounds like they're stopping. And you think to yourself, A, it's my car getting broken into. Thankfully that did not happen. Doesn't look like it happened anyway. And B, is somebody coming back here to murder me? Or C, is it the police coming back to say, what are you doing back there? Again, no, no, no trespassing signs as of now. But anyway, kind of adds to the creepiness. You never know what's going on. You hear a car and you're like, oh, oh geez, am I about to get murdered? Is my car about to get broken into? Or are the cops about to arrest me? <laughs> Again, kind of adds to the, the creepiness, the, the, uh, the ambience of, uh, of going back there. But all right, anyway, guys, like I said, I'm going to get back to Florida. Thanks for watching. That was cool. Come out here. Check this out. All right. Bye.